got it. Good morning. Good to be here today. Good to be here. Like a gentleman said, it's, it's great to be here better than any hospital in town. And I agree with him. It's wonderful to be free today and have the Word of God working for us, working on our behalf and all kinds of things. So I'm just glad you joined us today. I want you to be uh, blessed, just as blessed as I am. And so receive this word right now uh, with what it's intended to build your life and strengthen your life, encourage your life. And like I said in the little ad, it may even challenge your life a little bit, but that's okay. We do great when we get challenged. It, it makes us desire to move on. So, Father, bless these people right now with this word of God. Put it into their hearts. Take it to where you intend it to go, Father. And as you say, you back your word, you, wor you watch over your word, you watch to see your word come up to, to cause it to happen. Isn't it great to have a God that's, that's behind his word? I mean, uh, as I prepare today, you know, it's like always there are all these things that I want to share, and then I boil them down and say, well, there's just a few things that I need to, uh, to pr uh, produce today that will bring life into people's lives. And, you know, um, I got to thinking about the things that I've been teaching lately. Uh, even last uh, time we met a few days ago, we talked about empowering rural America, and this is just a short little review on that. I talked about prayer rallies that I would uh, believe that within maybe a few weeks we can uh, have live meetings where we let you know about it and we meet maybe possibly on a Saturday morning or something. And we, uh, we talk about the word, but we pray for you and help you get direction because it's important right now for you to have direction in your life. If you're being challenged by this word and you're, you're motivated to move on with what God has for you, then you'll want to know where you fit in all of this. And I can only touch on this in, in a few minutes a day, but I will. And I also last time we talked, I talked about activating the men. I won't bury that one today, but it's great when men stand up to be men and take care of their families, love their families, and also be leaders of their families and to walk with God and, and stretch out and begin to be the man of God that people intended. So that was a little focus on men. I love women, too. Uh, you know, there's a place for all of us. So anyway, we also talked about having a, some dominion instead of being victimized by things that go on. And I was particularly speaking about agriculture and produce and businesses. And I just said, you don't have to be a victim of the things that are out there. We can grow in faith and we can rise up and be somebody. You know, I thought about now moving on a little bit. I thought about prayer and authority that I like to teach. And I'll be teaching a lot more and influencing you, hopefully, to step into these things um, and get a hold of it. You know, our prayer and authority is backed by Almighty God, the great creator of the whole universe, the Prince of Peace, the, the mighty Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ, the Lord who died for you, and the Holy Spirit that empowers it all. So, when, you know, when, when I teach these things on prayer, you say, well, how can we get all that done? Well, you may not be able to, but you can issue your faith like, like we talk about. You can say these things. You can you can you can let this come out of your heart and build your faith. But guess what? When you release your faith and you pray certain things in the name of Jesus, I'm telling you, all heaven is behind that prayer. And don't you forget it, because you know it's so easy to be watered down by what you hear out there in circles. Like uh, you know, and I don't want to beat it to death, but. You listen to people, and you don't hear a lot about faith. You, you hear a lot about, well, maybe God doesn't care anymore. Maybe he doesn't going to answer your prayers. Uh, yeah, all these kind of things. Well, he does answer your prayers. And when you speak out and learn about authority of the believer, that's all about your empowerment by the Holy Spirit. Is that too deep? I hope not, because that's where it's at. You know, I know that I can challenge some people to move on. And some of you won't want to necessarily move on, and that's fine because we have to find our place. We have to be there and, and you know, talking about some of these things. And maybe I'm getting ahead of, of, of something here, but at the same time, I thought about where people get inspired or challenged to move on with the Spirit of God and move past where they're at. Uh, I think about some people, because Sandy and I have been around a while, and we've dealt with a lot of people, helped a lot of people, some people we couldn't help. But, you know, some people say, well, I know that's all good, Gary, but I'm not comfortable with that. 
I'm not comfortable to move on. I'm pretty happy right where I'm at. Well, in the meantime, I have this to ask you. Have you been comfortable in the last 60, 90 days being locked up in your house? You see, that's where it's at. We can either take a hold of where we're at because we have, uh, we have a spirit of darkness, a major one. And I taught on spiritual warfare a couple weeks ago. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe I ought to go back and listen to that. But we have a devil that, that doesn't want you to have anything. He doesn't want you to have freedom. That's the way it is. So by moving off into this, we move into God's power instead of our own because it's not our power that moves mountains. Trust me, it's our, it's our issuing of authority, our issuing of his word, but his power backs up our word. So that's how prayer works. Uh, you know, some people just think God just going to come down and do certain things, but he looks to you for your prayers, your faith, and I'm telling you, prayers answered in faith will be answered, and they'll be, they'll be the way you desire it. And because what? You're born again child of God. You have the heart of God in filling you, and you're not going to pray for some stupid thing. The more you walk in this, the more you realize you have the Holy Spirit to help you orchestrate that prayer, and you're going to pray for wisdom and all those things. So I, I don't know, where do I start in this outline? I threw down some outlines here, but there are some things that are important. And one of the things that's really big right now, today, th today, I'm not talking about yesterday, I'm talking about today. Today, uh, the, the uh, Jewish people celebrate the day of Pentecost. Now, if I took you back 2,000 years ago, we'd come to a place where Jesus has been on the cross, he's off the cross, he's, he's, he's been to hell and back, he's been to heaven, and so on. He's been all these places. It's all in the Word of God. And he appears back to his disciples. And here's what he said in Matthew 28, 18 through 19. He said, And Jesus came and spoke to them, this is after he's risen now. He's cleaned up. He's risen. He's come back to their surprise, and he spent time with them, uh, a lot of time with them. Anyway, he says, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations. Now, people say, well, that's him. No, therefore, if you understand English usage, that means it was given to him, and therefore it's yours. So when you're thinking about this, this is an empowerment. And then the next thing we find here is uh, uh, he's speaking at the last there in Acts. You go to Acts chapter 1, and, and we see something. He's speaking to them, and he says, and the Bible says, and being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me, for John truly baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not too many days from then. And in verse 8, now I want to get a hold of this. In verse 8 he said, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, to the ends of the earth. Okay, today, now we don't know exactly, but, but a lot of us hooked up, walking with the Lord right now, some prophets that we were familiar with. We believe today not only is the day of Pentecost, but it's a powerful day of Pentecost. It's 2,000 years after this particular time. And you see, the interesting thing about this, when they gathered in Jerusalem, it was several people. There were the 12, but then there was 120, it said. Uh, and these were all people that were following Jesus. But a lot of them had, didn't know what to do when he was crucified and so on. We, I'm not going to get into that today necessarily. But all of a sudden, here they are. And the Bible says they're in one accord. You know, right now where we live today, People say, well, there's this denomination, there's that denomination, there's that, there's this, there's that, and that's true. And they all have their own little village. And, and they say, well, do you believe this? Well, that's not how my church believes. Well, how about that church? How does your church believe? You see, it's not about Lutheran, Methodist, Catholic, Congregational, whatever they are, uh, Word of Faith, Assembly of God. It's not about any of that. These people met on one accord. What was that accord? 
It was Jesus and the word of God and the power of the Holy Ghost. You see, we're living in a time when the Lord wants us back in that thought process. That doesn't mean I don't like your denomination. doesn't mean any of that, but it's either he wants this power working through you. And if that's already working through you, you're probably in the right place. But if it's not, you need to examine because it's not about denominations or this or that. It's about the word of God working mightily in you. That's the empowerment. And once you get that straight and you have a great desire to move on with the Lord, uh, the, you're, you'll, you'll see some things that are different. I want you to have a new, de- new identity. And that's what came out of this. All of a sudden, these people all of a sudden had an identity. They're full of the Holy Ghost. They're full of power. They're full of all these kind of things. And now we, we see also um, uh, uh, what happened after that. Uh, in verse in Acts 2. This is what happened on that day of Pentecost. Guess what? Today is the day of Pentecost. It happens about 50 days after Easter, somewhere around in there. That's when it happens. That's about where we're at right now. Many people feel there's a great, powerful thing happening today. And you know, if you open up your heart now, uh, shut down any prior thoughts that this might be extreme, Uh, forget that for a moment, then here's what can happen for you today wherever you're at, in your group, in your house, or whatever, because this thing of being locked up somewhere, that's over, folks. That is over. Uh, Anyway, in Acts 2, chapter 1, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. One accord. There was no dissension. There was no I'm better than you. They were humbled right there, and they're ready to receive. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of the rushing mighty wind, and it filled whole house, the whole house where they were sitting. They then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each one of them. You know, you open up to this thing, this idea. And you allow the Holy Spirit to come into your life, you just might feel that fire. I'm telling you, you might feel that fire. In fact, I'm praying that you do. because. Uh, and then it says in verse 4, and they were all, I want you to say all, all of them, were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues, and the Spirit gave them utterance. You see, once they opened up to that, then they opened up to the fact that they let the Holy Spirit do whatever he wanted to through them. And that's what we need to follow after. We need to examine this and, and say, Lord, I want that. I want it. You see, Sandy and I came up in a crazy way, and a lot of you heard our testimony. But I didn't know about any of this stuff. I, I didn't even know, you know, the first thing that the Lord had to do was find some uh, guy to show us a book to read that was all about Bible history proven through prophetic things and realize this Bible is absolutely the inspired word of God. Some of you go to denominations that don't believe that anymore. They just think some guy wrote that thing through history. Well, it was written over many 1,800 years with many, many authors, and most of them never even knew each other. So you, you figure it out, and it all agrees. So anyway, uh, uh, in verse 41 then, same chapter, verse uh, chapter 2, verse 41, then those who gladly received his word, those who gladly received his word, those who gladly received his word, that and that day, about 3,000 souls were added. How'd you like to, if you're hooked up like I am and you really care about what's going on, and you step out your door today and start preaching to somebody and you don't even know where the preaching came from, uh, you, you know, Peter wasn't any skilled order. Trust me, he was a fisherman. He went out and started preaching his heart out, and guess what happened? 3,000 people got saved. That means they came into the kingdom. And, and it's like, wow, how could that be? Well, how that could be is if you're believing like I do and Sandy does and a lot of the people that we're associated with and watching the times and watching the prophecies and so on, we totally believe that that can happen through you, through me, through anyone who makes a decision right today to move on with the Lord. See, we have that choice. 
<laughs> we really do. But I don't want to be locked up again. How about you? I don't want to be there. So if I don't want to be locked up again by some uh, mayor or governor or not, not our president, but, but, you know, the other presidents would have locked us up, and they'd still love to do it uh, in the future. They'd like to lock us up. Don't you not believe that? So if you not want that to happen, we need to realize that we have authority, Jesus said, over all power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any, over serpents and scorpions. Well, I'm going to tell you something. This socialist, uh, communist stuff, that's serpents and scorpions. That's like snakes out there with a devil working through them to lock you up, steal your life. You know, Jesus said, I have come that you might have. He said, the thief has come but to kill, steal, and destroy. But he said, I have come to bring you life. And also, he's come to give us authority over all these things that would take our life away. So, again, we need to change our identity. We need to start thinking about some things. You know, what, what we say out of our mouth. You know, I'm a child of God. I am not a sinner saved by grace. Now, that may step on somebody's theology, and I don't mean to be critical of what everybody else wants to do, but I'm a child of God. That's who I am. Why? Because I'm born of the Spirit of God. I, and I wasn't born by some accident out of time either. I'm redeemed by His blood. That means I'm redeemed. Uh, you know, uh, sin does not have authority over me. There's a great song out there that, that talks about that right now. But anyway, the other thing I like to say is I'm groomed for success. I'm not groomed for failure and chance. And how am I going to make that happen? Well, the Bible says I'm endued with power from on high, on high with power and authority from the spirit of the living God. So you see, the net effect of all this is uh, once we open up to this and realize this is a day of Pentecost and we can take this and there could be this great outpouring that we're talking about. But God, I'll tell you right now, wants nations. And the thing that has really stopped the church, I say the ecclesia, the organized church, from, from, from really stopping a lot of this is they don't look outside their doors. It's like your own personal life. You know, we, we grow when we reach out and put our hearts into other people. That's when we grow. Uh, Sandy and I have shared that before. It's not to be bragging, but we've always wanted to share. We've had something good, always wanted to share it with others. And you know what? If you want to really move ahead in your life right now, you learn about authority, of course, and uh, you need to have authority because you need to set that over your families and stop the devil from messing with you. If you have anything going on with your children, or maybe they're, little kids maybe they're married maybe they're whatever hey a lot of our life has been standing guard over our families married grandchildren whatever we we stand over them with authority and we don't we don't do the if thing if god will take care of them no we use the 91st psalm we use but we find a board authority and if there's any other scriptures i can find to use to protect my family i will but bless god in the meantime i'm also speaking over our president I'm also speaking over Israel. I'm speaking over these things. I'm, I'm taking these, uh, these things that God has planted, and I'm using them to reach the nations as well as the people. And in the meantime, uh, trying personally to be the man of God to take care of my wife, my family, and all those things. Because he's given us that capacity. You say, well, how can I do all these things? Well, you know, there's a couple scriptures here. Get, here's an old dilapidated uh, uh Amplified Bible. You don't have to have an old dilapidated one, but if you went over to that uh, Ephesians 6, here's, here's something I tell myself all the time. I said, I am strong in the Lord. I'm empowered through my union with him. I draw my strength from him. That strength which is boundless might provide. See, we're strong in the Lord and the power of his might. I like this other than Philippians Amplified, and I just recommend you start feeding on these kind of things. Uh, you know, instead of saying, well, he may be willing or maybe won't or all those kind of uh, things like that. They're just so we, we concentrate on these things. I have strength for all things. This is Philippians 4.13 amplified. I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. I'm ready for anything and equal to anything through him. It's not my power. It's his working through me who infuses inner strength into me. I'm self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. See, Think about that. You start telling yourself that every day, a few times a day. I'm telling you what, in a 
in, in a short time, you're going to have a different vision of what you can or can't do. It's all about the possibilities. You know, what is my, what do I feel my calling is? <laughs> my calling is not only to love you people, but also to begin to challenge you and, and, and draw you into a different level, to take you up a notch. You know, that's how I look at the word. I mentioned that the other day. When I started hearing that I could pray in Jesus' name and he'd give me those things, I didn't say, well, now I can go get me a nice oil well out there and live happily ever after. No, I didn't. I said, now I can learn how to believe in those things that I need to be a dad, a husband, a responsible man with the money, and all those kind of things. That's how I used my faith and still do. I, I don't look at it. I love the prosperity teaching because guess what? We all need to pay our bills. And, you know, some people say, well, I have all I need. Yeah, well, how about reaching out and sending some money to somebody that, that has a need? You know, some, I, I won't go back into that, but, but uh, a lot of you have been generous with the poor and so on. But there's a lot of things out there. Where was I? You know, <laughs> I just, I just want to put some things into your, your life today to realize this is a day of Pentecost. There's a lot more to come. We, I believe there's a powerful outpouring right now. And it's, if you will take it into your heart, it's yours. And you ought to just lift up your hand and say, Father God, I receive everything you have for me and everything for my family and all that's around me, Father. I pray you give me an unction by the Holy Spirit to move in the power of this word. I pray, Father, that, that since you watch over your word, your I'll bring your word to you, and I know you'll cause it to happen. That's what I want for you today. That's what I want you to have. You know, it's kind of like, hey, it's been good for me. I want you to have it too. I want you to change that identity. Stop, stop thinking about, well, you know, whether uh, I'm so no good or I'm a sinner or I'm just an iron worker. You know, I, uh, you know, you're somebody. And you might be the most powerful person that raised up in your community. Who knows? It doesn't matter about that anyway. But you start sticking your head up there. You start making some things. You start getting bold of this gospel. You know, I was laughed at a long time ago. You, you better believe, and some of you knew me then and know me now. And I was called a lot of different names 40 years ago. I really was. And not everybody wanted to be around me at that time. But you know what? I made a decision that I was God's man. I wasn't the banker's man or the mayor's person. or I wasn't any of that. I already had a dose of all that. But I, was, I wanted to be a man of God. I wanted to achieve everything I was called to do. I wanted to achieve everything I was equipped to do because this isn't the time today to talk about gifts. But I'm telling you, there's our gifts in your life just waiting to happen. And it's like a story I shared in the last couple minutes here about when we, we uh, got born again and we tried going to a, a kind of a big popular social church and and. And knowing there was something in me that was beyond, something was in me bigger than just trying to get by. And I walked into that church, and I saw there were only two positions. Well, there were more than that if I wanted to just usher for the rest of my life. And that's not a bad thing. That's a great place if that's where you fit. But all I saw was this preacher who wasn't even preaching the word. I saw his wife could sing like a bird. I said, where do I fit in this? See, that could be you today. I'm telling you, you can fit. And you start walking in this, you keep feeding on this word of God, and guess what's happened? God is going to bring you things in your heart. He may bring it through dreams in the night. He may bring it through friends, and they're going to start saying, uh, let's just say your name is Joe or whatever it is, and say, Joe, I see some really gifts in you. I see some things that, that really God's really starting to use you in some things. What are you doing? And, and you, you don't know what to say, but so I'm just being Joe, uh, you know, or whatever that is, or Julie, or whatever your name is. You know, God has gifts, and he's wanting to activate them in you. So don't be surprised. After this message, you wake up tonight in the middle of the night and God is giving you a dream or speaking to you in the night and he's, he's going to begin to give you some really cool things. I mean, uh, he's going to tell you those things that he designed you to, to be in the first place. Well, anyway, praise God. You know, uh, I, just, I just love to bring forth the word. And, you know, I, I had a thought this morning because, you know, a few years ago it was really popular. People bought this little bracelet that said, uh, I think it said WWJD. And, and it was, well, what would Jesus do? And, of course, I don't know what they were thinking at the time, whether they were getting ready to do something they shouldn't do or whatever. But I got to thinking, what would Jesus do? Well, you know what Jesus would do? 
He'd lay hands on the sick. He'd cast out demons. He'd get people full of the Holy Ghost. He'd get people baptized and filled and everywhere in Jesus' name. And by the way, this time I'm talking about today is the baptism. This is a real baptism, the Holy Ghost immersed into the body. It's not about how wet you get. It's about the Holy Ghost and filling your body, infusing your body with power and strength and vision. And glory to God, isn't it fun to think about where you could be uh, not only tomorrow, but a year from now, and five years from now. But God needs you. And with this outpouring that we feel is here, there's going to be an acceleration. You know, it took me 42 years to get here. Might get you 15 minutes. I don't know about that, but we have to get based in the Word and so on. But we don't have to memorize the Bible. I still don't have it memorized. Uh, it doesn't matter. What, what matters is the fruit that you, you go out and you sow things into people's lives. And, you know, it's like Paul said one guy sowed, one guy watered, but it's God that gives the increase. So don't forget about that. You know, when you're sowing life into people, maybe sowing uh, cash into people, sowing uh, comfort into people, you're praying for them, well, it's God that's going to cause them to be healed. It's going to be God that caused them to be enriched, and he'll, he'll enrich you father, uh, for your uh, great heart in giving them. So, Praise God. Well, if I had something else to pray, I don't remember what it was. But don't, I want you to think about that one thing. Are you comfortable? You know, Gary's preaching pretty wild right now. I don't know if I'm comfortable stepping into that. Well, I want you to think about that. That's up to you. But how comfortable were you in the last 60, 90 days being told you couldn't leave your house? You had to do this. You had to do that. Because, brothers and sisters, the bad news is... <laughs> That could be what's coming if we don't take a hold and we start standing up to the devil and standing up and saying, look, you're not having our nation. You're not having my family. You're not having Israel. You're not having uh, South America. You, you know, that's what happens when you get to pray. And that's called an intercessor that's really got a heart for the Lord stepping into it. So anyway, that's about all I have to say that's nasty. But I, I think you need to think about how comfortable you are now. What, what is your comfort zone? That's where it's all at. So God bless you. I just pray in Jesus' name. And as I pray for you, I just thank the Father reaching out into the dimensions of, of the people that are watching this today live and those that watch the follow-up video. I pray, Father, that you'll fill them all the fullness of God, Father, and you'll fill them with dreams and visions, Father, and, and recognition that they are somebody. They, they can have your faith working through them at all times in Jesus' name, and you'll honor their prayers. You'll cause those things to happen. You'll watch over the authority that they issue and make sure that happens. So, Father, bless them right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. And I will tell you this in closing. Some people keep asking. Our, our address is Box 800, Lead, South Dakota. That's close enough. Box 800, Lead, 57754. And uh, if you want to uh, write to us or anything or even uh, sow into our ministry, we're growing. Uh, that We sure will accept it. Uh, you'll be blessed if you do. But anyway, be blessed with this word today in Jesus' name. Amen.